Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, uh, and welcome to this G Local 23 event. Uh, my name is Renata Mirulla. I'm particularly excited to welcome you to this event today because I'm also the facilitator of Eval Forward, which is uh, the, the, the question of discussion today. So how and why do community of practice for evaluators deliver? We will uh, see uh, what Eval Forward has achieved, the challenges, uh, the opportunities of communities of practice for evaluation. Uh, based particularly on the experience of Eval Ford, uh, because we also have a review, uh, a recent review, that we will also see what, uh, what the, the results and the recommendations and the outcomes of this review are. Uh, so let me introduce you to the agenda for today. Uh, yes. So we will start with a, a presentation of the Eval Forward Independent Review by Carla Jackson. I will introduce you in, in a few seconds. Then we will have a panel discussion around the value of community of practice for evaluators. And uh, uh, for this panel, we have some of the sponsors and some members of this, uh, of this uh, community of practice. Uh, then we will have time for comments and feedbacks from participants and uh, we conclude and look at the possible way forward. So to go to the panel, uh, we, we will have a before, uh, after Carl uh, Jackson will present uh, the review, we will have a panel discussion uh, with uh, some of the members and the sp sponsors of Valford. You see them here in this picture. I will also reintroduce them uh, later. So let me uh, stop sharing. And uh, before I hand over to Carl, I'd like to propose you a quick poll to see how many of you are a member of a community of practice related to evaluation? You may have seen this, uh, you may have uh, joined this event because you've seen it on the G Local or other channels, but maybe you are not a member of Eva Ford or maybe you are a member of another community of practice on evaluation. So just to, to let us know how many of you are familiar with communities of practice, are active members or just members. I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, okay, I see that most of you are members. I'll end the poll and share the results. Yes, uh, so <clears throat> most of you are members, but there are a few that are not members, that perhaps we can convince them to become members of Eval4 today, <laughs> hopefully, or at least to, to raise their interest in communities of practice. Uh, so thanks uh, for that, for uh, joining the poll. And um, I'll close this. And let me hand over to Carla Jackson. He's an experienced evaluator and uh, also expert in knowledge management and communities of practice. And he uh, did uh, led the um, independent review of Eval Ford. So we will hear more about it uh, now. <laughs> uh, so over to you, uh, Carl. Thanks. Hey, Renata. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. So, yeah, my company, West Hill Knowledge, was invited to carry out a review of Eval Ford uh, last year. And so I'd just like to spend a, a few minutes just sharing a bit of background, how we kind of conducted the evaluation, um, what some of the kind of uh, lessons coming out of that are. So I'm just going to start by sharing my screen. So let's just go with that. And I'm going to go into full screen. So hopefully in a second, you'll see the first slide. Good. All right. Thank you. So yes, lovely to be here as part of uh, the G Local Evaluation Week. So um, many of us are perhaps already members of the Eval4 Community of Practice, but for those who are not, just a brief overview of what we're talking about today. So Eval4 is a community of practice building evaluation capacity for food security and agriculture and rural development. Uh, launched in 2018, so coming up for five years of uh, delivery now. Um, and just some brief stats, there are on average about three and a half thousand monthly users. Uh, those users are coming from about 127 different countries globally. 
um, and Eval Forward is a platform which is trilingual. So uh, conversations in Eval Forward, documentation happen in English, French, and Spanish. And that's delivered through a range of different mechanisms. So we looked in the evaluation at what was happening in terms of discussions on Eval Forward, the range of kind of uh, learning webinars, blogs for evaluation, practitioners writing about their kind of hard won experience. There are opportunities for networking. People can become formal members of Eval Forward and share profiles. And obviously the heart of communities practices, practitioners sharing their own knowledge. Um, and Eval Forward is, a, is a, a community practice which has been supported by four founding agencies, so FAO, IFAD, the World Food Programme, and the CGIR. So those evaluation offices came together, saw a need, and we'll hear a little bit later in the panel about some of the origins of Eval Forward. Um, so that was kind of what we were looking at in the evaluation. Just briefly then, just to touch on the kind of purpose and methods uh, we used in the evaluation. So the purpose of the, the review was really to draw out lessons after four years of this community of practice for evaluators running, um, to see how appropriate and useful um, it was in terms of the members' own kind of reaction. What, were the, what did they tell us now about their immediate or long-term experience? And take it as an opportunity to identify areas where Eval4 might need to adapt um, or improve its results. I mean, things don't stand still. So this was a great opportunity to do a kind of a, a mid-term stock take of, of Eval Ford. Um, so this was a, a, a mixed methods approach, so partly participatory, partly theory based. Um, we uh, engaged with uh, a range of uh, members to do some deep dives to pick up kind of stories of change. Obviously, there with a, a social media and website platforms that Eval Ford is sitting on, there's quite a lot of uh, metrics available, and then we supplemented those with qualitative interviews and a member survey. Um, we tried to make sure that the recommendations that came out of the evaluation were going to be as useful and as used as possible. And so we went through a process of co-creating those recommendations with the um, with the, the, the steering group and the executive group for Eval Ford. So that really helped the evaluation to, to, to bed in, I think, and be impactful. Um, and we also used kind of co-design process. So originally um, Eval Ford, before the review started, didn't have its own theory of change. Um, but we felt there was kind of something implicit there, a lot of thought and consideration had gone into Eval Ford and it was evolving. Um, and so with the, the steering group and the Renata as a facilitator, we went back and kind of revealed that implicit theory of change and then used that as an object to hold um, discussions with peer, peer organizations. Then we invited other evaluation uh, communities of practice and networks to look at that theory of change and say how they thought whether that sort of stood up uh, to their idea of what uh, an evaluation community of practice should look like. So those are some of the methods used. Um, and this is an example of the, the theory of change. So as you can see, it's quite a lot of information here. I'm not gonna go through this in detail today, um, but I think we found that this was a, a really useful tool for uh, a community of practice evaluation and for sort of strategic thinking. Um, and later on, you'll get a link shared to more information about this theory of change and how we conducted the evaluation, the recommendations and findings in the review report. Um, I'm going to take a, maybe another five minutes now just to tell you through some of the uh, kind of key lessons that came out of our review. Um, so, you know, to the, the, the core of what our discussion is today is, you know, sort of how and why do communities of practice for evaluators deliver? And there are kind of four uh, areas I'd like to really kind of pull out for you today. So, um, first of all, is that it's really clear that they help to build the social capital amongst evaluators. So bridging gaps in evaluators' own social networks through a facilitator kind of proactively convening people and kind of platforming people's views. So I think Eval Ford has been really lucky. It's had a dedicated um, facilitator who spans four agencies and has really got to know the ecosystem of evaluators working on food security, agriculture, and rural development. And I think they, you know, the facilitator becomes a, a trusted voice. And so that enables enables them to, to nudge relationships to form um, between individuals and subgroups. And we think this is especially valuable for evaluators in the global south, where they may have fewer peers nationally. So this opportunity to be connected up, um, even with um, peers in their own country that they may not have met before, as well as through international networking. Um, second way in which the COP is delivering is by improving practice. So this is kind of really facilitating the exchange, adaptation and use of evaluation methods and methodologies. So 
we've got a community of practice with 127 uh, members from 127 different cultures, contexts, systems. And so they're really able through the community to contextualize sometimes rather dry methodologies and say how they would work in particular, particular contexts. Um, there are peer discussions that deepen understanding of the kind of the problems, challenges and opportunities of, you know, of conducting evaluations in the food security, agriculture, rural uh, development uh, sector. And Eval Ford is constantly curating existing knowledge and documenting the community's emerging knowledge. So when there are webinars, notes are, are written up and shared. So it's really starting to build a, a body of community knowledge, which is really valued by the members. Then I think, you know, uh, this community of practice is really helping to kind of enrich learning. So it really helps to amplify and spread the impact of individual evaluators knowledge. It really through people's experience of being in the community has helped them to feel more kind of confident and committed to using evaluation as a tool for bringing about change. And it's also I think people's participation in, you know, um, leading on webinars or helping to write blogs it builds their their soft skills in how do you put evaluation knowledge into practice communications networking knowledge exchange are some of the key things that we as evaluators need to be good at and eval forward is certainly helping active participants to do that um, and fourthly yeah eval forward as a community of practice uh, helps to occupy a really important niche within capacity development around evaluation so by kind of positioning itself well amongst other initiatives which may be focusing on formal training organizational development or specialized sector groups eval forward has become a really good kind of recognized as a good neighbor and a trusted partner partner among other communities of practice um, and that's maybe through you know it's the website but also through being turning up at um, conferences and events so those are kind of four key areas of kind of you know positive lessons on communities of practice and how they deliver for evaluators just uh, going to touch now on my last slide on three areas that can kind of stop communities of practice delivering and thankfully these were issues that we didn't pick up in eval forward but i think you know looking more broadly across the experience of a range of different communities of practice that i've um, uh, supported and evaluated these are some of the things that come up so i mean i think firstly it's that often facilitation could be too limited. So if there isn't enough time, or maybe there's a, a high turnover of facilitation staff, um, or maybe just not kind of dedicated attention and in somewhat a sense of kind of like passion and commitment to the community, um, that sense of trust amongst the community doesn't develop. A second issue that can really affect communities of practice is if, is if the, the kind of the agenda, the, the, the topics, the discussions that the community engages in are too centrally set. It's really important. Healthy communities of practice very much are owned and driven by the by the practitioners who join. Um, obviously, when you've got um, supporting agencies, supporting uh, organisations involved, there's a balance to be struck there between finding an opportunity for them to um, articulate issues that they're they're interested in. But that, that is a it's a good balance needs to be achieved, and not all communities of practice do that, especially ones that maybe are, are, are sponsored or you know, kind of more project basis for short term gain. They don't really get that level of engagement and I think that's also links into this issue that some communities of practice don't really have strong legitimacy um, so maybe um, participants aren't invited to help set agendas they aren't uh, part of the governance they aren't regularly asked their views um, and so this can lead to communities of practice that sometimes kind of float a little bit free of their context um, so yeah, so it's been a really uh, nice opportunity uh, to uh, review Eval Ford and we've got made some really concrete uh, recommendations which the founding agencies are now uh, taking forward and as I say there's more information in the link to the report that uh, Renata is going to share. Um, and now I'm going to hand over to Renata and then over to our panel. So thank you very much. I'm going to stop sharing now. Thank you, Carl, for giving us this overview on, on, the, on the review. I think you mentioned many aspects. I would like to take the opportunity also to, to say, to touch on something you also mentioned as regards to challenges. I, in, this, in the case of Eval Ford, uh, it's been a fortunate and a lucky position of, of a community of practice being supported uh, throughout the years by the funding agencies. So we have four agencies that have committed uh, to, to support uh, with the facilitation and with uh, all the, the background needed to really 
uh, run a community of practice, which is not always the case with other communities. And so I think I want to thank also the agencies that have been supporting Ever Forward throughout the years. And this is why we are here today. So um, before going to our panel, I'd like to ask Emil, uh, who's also helping in the background of this event, to share a menti uh, poll uh, to ask you uh, what kind, um, what value you find or you think being uh, part of a community of practice brings you? So if you could share in one word or a couple of words very shortly, uh, we will uh, uh, leave this menti uh, open and then, um, and then we can look at the end, towards the end of the session, what kind of word cloud of values uh, can emerge. So there is a link uh, in, the, in the chat, but uh, I'll ask uh, Emil if he can share his screen perhaps. Or oh, oh we, oh we can, or oh do we go to the menti on the chat, Emil? Yeah, I think it's better if uh, we go to the link of the chat because. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in the chat, you can see a link to the menti. So we invite you to to participate in that poll also, so we can see at the end what what comes up. So let me go to the panel now. So I'd like to invite our um, panel speakers. So we have uh, um, Masahiro Igarashi. Uh, he's the former director of the FAO Office of Evaluation and currently director of the WHO Office of Evaluation. And he is also co-chair of Evar Partner, which, which is another big network, uh, a big network and a family of networks in the evaluation community with whom Evar Ford has collaborated uh, over the years. Um, so perhaps uh, Maza, if you would like to, I'd like to ask you, since um, Maza was um, one of the founders, or perhaps uh, the thinking leader <laughs> uh, behind Eva Ford, if he can share why he started this initiative. Thanks. Over to you, Masa. Okay. Uh, thank you, Renata and dear colleagues. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, I'm Masa Igarashi. Uh, currently the director of evaluation at uh, WHO, uh, previously at FAO, uh, where I started uh, together with colleagues uh, in other agencies, uh, the community of practice level forward. So I wanted to briefly mention why I, did I start this initiative. At that time, uh, I felt in many places, including at FAO, uh, evaluation was seen largely and often as an exercise of organizational accountability and improvement. So how could we make our activities produce more results and with better use of resources? It focused on institutions and activities, in short, the supply side. So in this way, the evaluation could serve some purposes, but was not responding to the call that was mounting, which is how could we contribute through evaluation to the progress towards SDGs, to, to the realization of a better, more equitable and sustainable world. So this required the turnaround of the perspective from the supply side to the demand side use evaluation to gain insight into how we could better achieve our strategic and policy goals. But such goals cannot be achieved if one focuses on his or her own institution. It required breaking out of the shell and engage with all stakeholders, particularly those who decide, design, implement, and assess policy and programs, and those who are to benefit from them. They should be aware of the value of evaluation and be advised on how they could use evaluation to this end. During my uh, evaluation career, when I visited countries in the context of our evaluations and talked to our stakeholders, 
I was surprised uh, pleasantly to see in many countries that people whose work included planning, commissioning, and managing evaluations, engaging with evaluations, and who are interested in using evaluation. There were those responsible for evaluation in many ministries and agencies in many countries. However, I also saw that they were often isolated. I felt the need to create a forum, a platform for these people to be connected to comrades and to provide opportunities for them to gain knowledge, exchange experience, and most importantly, be encouraged in using evaluation. I'm extremely happy to see that uh, Eval Ford has flourished, connecting so many colleagues around the world and providing benefits to its members. Let me also recognize that the hard work of Renata in realizing this success. At the same time, I also wish to encourage Eva Ford to further engage and involve those who are not evaluators, raising their awareness and interest and cultivate the demand for evaluation. So I stop here and give back the floor to Renata. Thank you, Maza, for giving us the initial thoughts uh, about and also a call for the future uh, for Eva Ford the further activities. I'd like now to ask uh, Svetlana. I see she joined the, the, the room as uh, Svetlana Negrushteva. She is from CGIR Independent Advisory and Evaluation Services. It's one of the four agencies supporting Eva Ford. So, she provides a, uh, a view from uh, uh, an agency that came later, that came at the beginning and then came later back on board on Eval Ford. <laughs> so thanks, uh, Svetlana, over to you for your motivations. <laughs> yes, thank you, Renata. And of course, I would agree uh, wholeheartedly with everything Maza said, and I would kind of continue on the maybe the non-usual suspects uh, that our organization is in terms of found founding members. So uh, the CGIR, um, if some of you may not know, is a global research partnership for a food secure future uh, dedicated to transforming food, land, and water systems in the climate crisis. And it's an organization that is headquartered in France, uh, but we have an office in Rome, and this is where we engage very um, heavily and very pleasantly with our colleagues and Rome based agencies because we all work in agriculture, in development, and food security issues. Uh, for uh, CGIR, I was, um, uh, I just joined three years ago, but I was a member of Eval Forward, you know, from the very beginning, uh, being outside a consultant. So I'm super excited to, to have an opportunity to continue engaging from a different, a different side. And also, um, our office uh, was very important to know that we have a different structure, of course, than uh, Rome-based agencies or any UN agencies. We have 12 research centers that basically do the hardcore science and research. And those are the people that I think Maza just mentioned, the non-evaluators. And we largely work with them and help them understand the value of the work that we do in evaluations and help them connect with our colleagues. And my understanding is that based on the statistics that we've been able to bring many of them into Evolve Forward, um, into Evolve Forward in the last couple of years by engaging, by having discussions, and by uh, forwarding different invitations to different uh, events. Uh, in terms of uh, kind of political and institutional commitment, we had it uh, in the previous evaluation office, and now we have it in this kind of it's a new version of the evaluation office. It continues. So for the Eval Forward Review, we did a very, um, I would say, active participation in this as part of steering, and we, we hope to continue. Um, in CGIR, which does research for development, agricultural research for development as the focus, um, it basically drives our evaluation practice. And of course, the, um, eval the hard science uh, is at the core of our work and not social science. And that is a very interesting kind of dimension and that we bring, but also dimension that requires innovative uh, methods and approaches to evaluating. And uh, we are really counting on uh, membership of our forward to help us learn together and to help us take this uh, forward. How do we evaluate research? How do we evaluate uh, uh, science? And how do we bring it together into the from the research to the uh, development agenda? 
And um, I would, of course, continue also uh, building on what Maza said, that reiterating that we need to talk outside of our bubble of uh, evaluation, which is a nice and pleasant bubble. I like it too. But we need to um, take a step outside and bring those who are not necessarily convinced uh, in the value of process, performance, and program evaluations, and who might be focused on impact assessments. But there is a place and time for um, everything for different types of evaluations, depending on the project cycle and depending on the needs of diverse uh, stakeholders that we have. And with that, I'll uh, stop and uh, I look forward to hearing more from our uh, participants. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. Uh, thank you again also for sharing your perspective. Uh, now we go to uh, three members uh, we invited to be here today. Uh, we have Nayeli Almanza, She's a member from Mexico, from the Rainforest Alliance. She's an evaluator. Hi, Nayeli. Uh, then we have uh, uh, Gordon Wanzare. He's from Kenya. He's an active member too, and he's uh, uh, an independent consultant. And uh, we have also uh, Anna, uh, Anna Maria Augustin. She's uh, also an independent consultant from uh, Poland. Uh, perhaps uh, I'll ask uh, Emil if he can spotlight also Anna and uh, Gordon. But okay, let's start with uh, Nayeli. Uh, <laughs> Nayeli, may I ask you uh, to share um, to share with us uh, something that uh, some value that uh, being a member, an active member of Everford brought to you, and any reflection you may have on the future, uh, where we should go from here, what you'd like to see. So over to you. Thank you, Renata. Hello, everyone. Um, yes, I, I, I am a member of Able Forward since um, 2020, um, mainly because I was exploring about uh, rapid assessment tools and uh, the, the COVID impact, uh, how to measure the, the COVID impact in some of our communities and I was dealing with how to how to do this um, exploration uh, considering the limitations of mobility and, and, that, um, and all that happened in, in that year. So I I happened to to discover the Eval Forward um, mainly one 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 post at the blog and it was very clarifying, and I, and I also tried to, to share my, my insights about how we were planning to do this uh, investigation and, and, and how we were uh, tropicalizing some of the tools that I found about uh, uh, other parts of the world. So it was amazing. Um, uh, uh, from that point and beyond, I, I tried to get in touch with some of the, of the members that uh, wrote uh, regularly that, that that blog post, but also I I happen to find another tool that later in my professional life and and in the Rainforest Alliance I I am trying to use to measure or to trying to measure uh, the impact of some of our of of the of some of our initiatives. A focus on, on rural development and um, market access to local producers. So I think that, well, for me, Evil Forward is a very valuable uh, community practice, and I am very proud to be part of it. But, um, and also, I think that uh, in my country, we do have some uh, evaluation communities, but well, I haven't identified one uh, focus on rural development or um, or food security. So uh, for me, this this well, this is an opportunity to uh, start to to networking with maybe the colleagues in my country and also in the in the Latin America region. So uh, that I think that that is my my conclusion and my my reflection to, towards the future. 
Thanks, Nayel. It's great to hear that you find some resources. Uh, I think the community is really one of the main aims is to really uh, support knowledge sharing and support with the resources that are useful in, in a way that are useful to those who work in this sector. So sometimes a community can be uh, easier to reach in terms of resources and knowledge than other types of uh, of uh, repositories or our knowledge uh, websites or other or other initiatives. So thanks for sharing that, Nayeli. Uh, Anna, uh, I'll turn to you. You've also been a, quite a, an active member, also proposing topics for discussions and also follow up webinars. Uh, over the years, we've been interacting quite quite a lot. We also met in person. Uh, I didn't have this chance with Nayeli. You, we, you're too far away, but with Anna, we met also in a, in a conference in person. So over yeah. to you for sharing some of uh, your experience. Yes, thank you, Anata, and everybody for this nice introduction and summary of uh, about poet as a community of practice. And uh, I have a really positive experience, uh, actually, how it started, I met Renata at a conference, which was just before pandemics, and I discovered that there's this nice community. So in the follow up, uh, when I had some very burning questions on how to solve methodological issues in the evaluations, which I've been doing, I decided to launch some discussions uh, via Evolve Forward community. And I had also an opportunity to uh, organize webinars, which uh, were a source of really interesting insights from very different members uh, from different institutions, different countries, different organizations. And I think it was very enriching and helping me to solve the practical problems. For instance, with review of the theory of change, I had a very burning question whether and how I can change the indicators uh, for evaluation in the course. So uh, it was helpful to see insights from other contexts. And for the future, maybe it would be nice uh, to have more face-to-face -face interaction and to get to know people, uh, because I've been interacting with a lot of people online and I met only a few of them so far. And I believe there is still a lot of nice energy here. So let's meet one day. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Anna. Uh, thanks, Anna. In fact, you mentioned the theory of change uh, review. Uh, that was a, a great discussion with a lot of uh, references shared by participants. And also we had this, this webinar follow up, which was uh, great knowledge sharing. And regarding face to face, uh, I think that would be wonderful. In fact, I think it's a, a question also of seeing uh, Again, going back to the institutional support, uh, seeing how much the, the, the support will be also for doing something that is uh, uh, really to um, st strengthen the networking opportunities for members and also the knowledge is sharing uh, among members. So we will see what the future brings us. Uh, now with the, with the review, as a follow-up uh, to the review, we will have, a, um, there, there, were, there were a few recommendations made in the, in the review and the, the executive group and the uh, steering group will respond, we will prepare a management response. So we'll follow up and then we'll see what the directions uh, will be uh, in the future for Everford. Uh, I wonder if there's uh, anyone in the in the audience that like that, that would like to share some of their experiences if they're members of this community or of other communities because we we had also another uh, panelist that we lost <laughs> Gordon I think he had problem um, connection problems so if anyone would like to share uh their experience if if you are a member of ever forward or even if you're not a member of ever forward if you have anything you'd like to share with us today i see a comment by uh silva ferretti uh, she says i found ever forward quite a unique niche able to share meaningful processes and ideas uh 
Shall I ask you, Silva, if you'd like to, since you're also a fellow member of this community, if you'd like to come forward and, and speak to your comment, if you can. Okay, uh, okay. Yes. I cannot come on video now. No problem. But um, I think this workshop should also be a great way to celebrate what you did so far. You are a unique niche. You are, because you are... Uh, great and spotting innovation. The tone is great. And I think tone matters. There is a fantastic uh, facilitative style, really able to kindly uh, foster learning, follow up on discussion. I love how the community provides summaries, translates and so on. It's absolutely unique. And uh, the soft part of the facilitation usually doesn't get uh, highlighted too much and it's a shame. So I really think this is super valuable because it's not just the evaluation as usual, but it's promoting a culture of evaluation founded on participation, sharing, innovation, and caring from what we did. So whatever you do in the future, don't transform it drastically in yet another usual evaluation uh, forum. We don't need that. There are full of them and, and really keep this unique spirit that you managed to build. Thank you. Thank you, Silva, for your uh, kind words. <laughs> I really appreciate them. And uh, I think you, you brought also so much to this community uh, as many other members here. Uh, bringing your knowledge, your practical knowledge. As you say, a uh, community of practice are also are a place where you can share really practice-based knowledge. Uh, so I'm very proud to have you <laughs> in this community. I see that Gordon is back. Uh, I don't know if he can uh, share with us. Gordon, can you hear us? I, I think Gordon is having some connection problems. Anyway, Gordon, when, when you are able to speak, you just can come in when you're able to, <laughs> to set the mic. Ah. Okay. I see that Carl also said something about face-to-face. -face. Do you want to speak to that, Carl? Uh, yeah, no, I was just saying, I think in um, another community of practice that I'm a member of, which is knowledge management for development, we've had a lot of success with um, members, uh, a kind of a bl blended funding model for face to face events where many members are able to fund their own costs. Um, and then providing, then seeking kind of, you know, seeking funding for grants for those members who maybe need some supported travel costs. So I think there can be, it's not a kind of a one or anything. Uh, kind of approach and I think often the the facilitation role is often to help to kind of you know put a pin in the in the calendar and say hey what would happen if we tried to to meet in six months time somewhere and then invite members to to collaborate in designing that face-to-face -face event thanks thanks is there anyone who has also questions as Aurelie is inviting also if you have any question also regarding the evaluation, the independent review, oftentimes also because I'm also a member of the KM for Dev uh, community of practice. Um, sometimes this issue about evaluating communities of practice, how do you value, how do you evaluate a community of practice? How do you measure uh, the value, the, yeah, the, the value added it brings? This is a, a topic that often comes because it's, it's very difficult to have metrics for uh, measuring the, 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 yes, the added value of being a member of a, a community of practice. Uh, so this is what the challenge that Carl faced in his review uh, so you, he used different method, different evaluation methods to, to, to try to compensate and to capture the value, but it's something that is not easy, easy to, to do. I mean, uh, there's a lot of um, things that go beyond, uh, behind the scenes in communities of practice and that not necessarily we are able to capture uh, or to measure. So this is something I wanted to uh, add. Uh, so, 
Is there any is there any other comment uh, from uh, or questions from the participants? Uh, maybe I can propose to uh, further. Maybe we can start having like regional uh, hubs to identify each other as uh, members of the of a forward. Yes, we, we tried the, until now to keep it global because it's also nice to have the sharing across the regions and the regions are so different in terms of evaluation capacities and uh, yes, evaluation culture. Uh, but this is some, something that comes often, uh, it, ever so often it is proposed to have regional. Uh, the, the, the risk I see with regional is that, that, that you, you create another, uh, let's say, a grouping that may, yes, that may interact on on uh, topics that are interested are interesting for the region, but maybe loses that that value of interacting with the more the global or other or other groups. But yes, as the community grows, it's something that we should consider because at, as as of now we have one thousand almost 1,600 members, and sometimes it can be more manageable. Even in my experience, I see that sometimes uh, smaller groups are, are more active than big groups. <laughs> sometimes people may be shy to, to express themselves or come forward in a, in a large group. So um, smaller or regional groups can be also a way, subgroups of the community can be a way perhaps to foster some interaction and then coming back, not creating a, a silos, but perhaps having some parallel discussion that then go back in the in the global. We have to find a way to do that, but yes. it's certainly a good idea. And Carl, you wanted to comment on Yeli's proposal? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> so many thoughts. But um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, maybe a blend is that, you know, it could be uh, if there's a region that's really keen to to start to have regional discussions, maybe the first step is to have a, a region say, right, we want to have a a face to face event. And I think in terms of travel, that could be a you know a possibility. You know, within the the LAC region, that could maybe be something you could, as a as a group of act excited active members could think hey Lev, we're going to do it we're going to there's a conference that at least you know like half a dozen of us are going to let's have a, a two-hour meetup and that's our regional conference and then these things in communities of practice have to be very organic and they can spread thanks thanks carl i see a comment by uh, ablaye uh, who thanks because uh, uh, of the, of this program, we have a lot of clear idea on the evaluation. Do you want to come in, Ablaye? Are you a member of Evalford or any other community? I don't know if Ablaye is here. No. Svetlana, I, see, I saw also your comment about um, a community of practice evaluation. Yes, thank you. I just posted it for colleagues because I know that, you know, I was in the selection committee. It is hard to find uh, evaluators who know how to evaluate communities of practice. And I'm, I certainly don't have answers, but a lot of the CGIA portfolio is implemented through um, uh, platforms or initiatives, and they all run through communities of practice. Uh, and including the gender platform that we're just finishing evaluating. So this is something that we, we are trying to learn about how to evaluate and hopefully we can provide some kind of knowledge uh, sharing around that at some point. So this was just a blog by our colleagues who are not evaluators actually, both are subject matter experts. Thank you. Thank you Svetlana for sharing that. Um... Maza says that also, if most are member of regional evaluation association, perhaps having a session on the side of regional evaluation conference, this we had in some cases, uh, at Afrea, for instance, in 2019, uh, and also at the ideas conference still in 2019. So this is something we can, uh, we do when we have the budget. 
uh, to travel. And uh, Luis Ortiz, um, do you want to come in on your comment, Luis, or do you want do you want to speak to your comment? Yeah, I can do that. Hi, Thanks. everyone. My name, Thanks. Is, my name is Luis. I'm um, in Washington, D.C. with with Japayago. Um, So what I you know, one thing that I have found is really, really important, and I'll just share a little bit from my comment there is um, really trying to shape the narrative of what a successful COP is. Um, for some members and even for some community managers, they might think that a community is successful if there are lots of posts all the time, you know, and, um, and you know, ultimately uh, sometimes sharing that imagine if um, all of the communities that you were a part of all shared two posts per day. It would be a total information overload. And so it's okay to see uh, some dynamism in the community, um, some changes over, you know, throughout the course of a year, depending on the topics of the COP, you might have more posts at a certain time of the year than at others. But if you're only looking at the posts, like on a monthly basis, that might be really discouraging. Um, I think it's also important, as was mentioned before, about investigating like what happens behind the scenes. You know, who is not comfortable replying all, but is still sharing something really, you know, really important. So making sure that community managers know what to look out for. Um, I think that you know we we all know that the uh, the high contributors are usually you know, three, four, at most 5% of a COP, but that's not always known by community managers. Um, so having things like a routine surveys that could really get to what empowered listeners or passive learners are getting, I think is really important to shaping um, shaping the story. And the last thing that I, I included in the comment was um, helping to, to, to think about the, all of the different success factors and that each community can, although we have some maybe shared practices or maybe even best practices that not every COP is going to have them. Um, but specifically for that, for the COP that you're managing and you're a part of is the most important thing having a charter or maybe it isn't. Um, is the important thing having um, alternative engagement strategies, whether that's routine coming together or in person or bringing in uh, external speakers to come talk to the group. Um, being, I think another one that's really important is uh, being, a, as a manager, being very aware of what the interests are within your within your community. There could be sub, you know, sub uh, topics. And that is a great opportunity as a manager to say, hey, I know that there are two people that are really interested in this one topic. Can you maybe uh, uh, do some investigation, investigating on that topic and present to our group, you know, in a short, in a short community huddle. So that's another, you know, kind of getting community managers to really think beyond just number of posts, I think is really critical. Thank you. Thanks so much, Luis. I really, I really appreciate this comment. Thinking beyond number of posts because it's true. I mean, uh, people uh, don't want to be um, overloaded with too many email messages, and it's important to uh, to have the meaningful ones. At the same time, it is important to encourage everyone to come in. So in Neverford, we have different channels for this. We have the uh, the online forum, so people can post online, and we have the mailing list. And uh, people can use different ways to intervene. And uh, uh, as a moderator, I try to make sure that there is a certain um, rhythm in the discussion, in the contributions to the discussion, and that people uh, can focus on a topic for a certain time, for a certain period of time and then go to another and not have too many threads at the same time. So this is <laughs> sort of a traffic light control. Uh, and also I appreciate what you say on uh, members that are active. It, it is true that it, it is a small percentage of those that are 
active members, but I like to call the others not passive because they're not passive. They're active in reading or, and in using the contributions. So uh, yeah, this is something that managers or sponsors of communities not necessarily um, think or understand, but it's uh, very important and it's well known uh, uh, across communities of practice. It's the dynamics, but also, yes, uh, the dynamics of community of practice are usually like this. Uh, so thanks so much. Um, I see another comment by uh, Silva. Perhaps uh, do you want to talk to her, that so we can hear your voice again, Silva? <laughs> and see you this time. Uh, you are muted. Oh, back, back. <laughs> um, OK, skip video. Um, what I wanted to say, as I was uh, spying my email on the side, I just received an invitation now to um, basically share in a large international forum a topic that I share in an article with evaluation forward. And, you know, this I just share in it because it happens literally now. How many things have happened like that, you know? What is the power of community or practice in making idea travel and being shared and so on? It's impossible to track. If I was not uh, sitting here, you know, when it happened, no one would have known. Um, I really think we need a place uh, that is free enough to create those energy, to identify topics worth sharing, as this one probably was, and um, be a little bit less obsessed in counting number of posts, numbers and so on, because we are really hitting the wrong road if we go that way. Thanks, Silva. Uh, Silva has also been um, uh, leading one, one of the Evalfora talks around understanding versus measuring. So <laughs> she's a, a supporter of really understanding instead of focusing on the measurement uh, all the time, because this is maybe misleading in many cases. So thanks, Silva, for that. Good luck for your invitation to the conference. I'm really glad about that. Uh, as we going towards the end, I'd like to invite Jorge, Jorge, sorry, Jorge, to come in on on with your question. I think it is uh, well, a question thank... to to Carl. Yes. Yeah, thank you. I I, I agree with uh, the points that are raising, and I like it. Not this focus on on not on post and not just on numbers, but I wonder if if the evaluation was also focusing on on the steps that you are all doing to ensure that activities will continue, that there will be no. Because I see, for example, all the the big effort that you put. But what if uh, I don't know? You get tired, or you don't do this, or 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 you need, to, or we need to make sure that the community grows. Uh, how? Are, 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 is the evaluation or did the evaluation also look at the steps that are already in place and that need to be in place to ensure continuity? Maybe a question for Carl, yes. <laughs> oh, hey, thanks Arif, so much. Yes, we did. Um, and uh, the review report does touch on the number of kind of more strategic issues. Um, so I'll just touch on three. So I think one is the a need to, um, at the kind of at the the level of the, the governance of the community and its kind of sponsorship, a reinvestment of political capital, um, because obviously you know, earlier we heard from Massa, very much involved in early stages and within the agencies that support these kinds of communities and give them kind of their kind of um, sometimes funding, but also their own kind of political capital, leadership moves on policy agendas check move on. So I think, you know, um, Eval Ford is a really good place now to make sure it's re-embedding itself in contemporary agendas of the founding agencies. Secondly, with that there, I think there is a real strong opportunity to deepen maybe one or two really significant collaborations with uh, related initiatives that exist in the evaluation capacity building space. And I think those conversations are kind of uh, are starting and I think that that could be really interesting. Um, and then a the third level, I think, and this is nice to see that this is a level of maturity of this community of practice is that people you know there are members with a degree of commitment to the community and experience who are now keen to step into um, some of these kinds of 
coordination, collaboration, maybe leading subgroups, helping to, you know, sort of um, organically set up a, a meetup in another conference where the, the participation in the running, it's not that it kind of substitutes for the facilitation, but you're broadening and deepening the engagement of the members of those who really want to step up to be a kind of a core group of members to support the, the future for the community. And all those things are uh, a part of our are part of our recommendations, and the the founding agencies are actively looking at them. But I think as members, I think also please you know read the the recommendations, and you know don't wait for the the agency to say yes, we're going to do this. If you're a member who really wants to take this forward, you know take it forward, engage. It's your community, shape and and use it. Thanks. Thanks so much. Carl, for responding to that. Um, as we going towards the end, I'd like to ask uh, Emil to share the Menti. Uh, I think many of you have participated. And uh, OK, so what's the value I see? Learning, networking, sharing, inspiration, exchange resources, collaboration, and many other words around sharing knowledge, sharing learning, no repeated efforts, innovation inspiring, social networks. Thanks so much, that's a nice cloud. <laughs> uh, thanks Emil for supporting and thanks for to all the members who, uh, and the participants who participated uh, in this Menti. I'd like to call Aurelie for some concluding remarks. Thank you, Renata. Can you hear me well? Yes, we do. Okay. Thanks. So just just uh, thanks to everybody for for the opportunity uh, of of sharing again, and for those who shared the very concrete experiences and how Eval Forward as a community of practice has been helpful to you, and also of the comments on what you found important. Those very much resonate with everything that we've been living for the last four to five years. And I was just reflecting, it's, it's, it's been a long way since 2018 when Masa came to us with his vision uh, and said, well, now what do we do? Uh, and looking back to these initial times and, and in preparation for this uh, G local session, I was uh, remembering that we were lucky to benefit from the experience the experience of peers uh, that had been uh, uh, undergoing efforts of bring, building a, a COP, I remember Eval Earth, the Réseau Francophone de l'Evaluation, they shared their learnings, their advice, and that was very useful for setting up the community uh, based on already some of the key learnings including some of the things that you've mentioned, uh, for instance, Luis, on the, the importance of having a dedicated facilitator and the team behind because it doesn't sort of come back magically. So it's, it's really great to have now an opportunity to share back uh, on the learning through this review and through this G-Local uh, session uh, after after those five years and, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll able to do it, do it again. So just, just also sharing back, reflecting on some of the points you made, uh, all of you uh, through your comments. Uh, you know, there are some elements that a community of practice lives by. First of all, the active, the active membership that constitutes the community of practice. And as I just mentioned, and, and some of you raised the, the, the importance of having somebody behind uh, who brings the useful references, because it's not just a number of posts, it's also a question of channeling the knowledge that comes to the community and, and making sure we don't, we're, we're not overwhelmed and it actually brings up to sort of some quality uh, comp, uh, inputs, which is important. And evaluation, Evad Forward is, is ticking many of the boxes from that perspective, also offering very various type of offering. There used to be a bit more face-to-face -face in the in the old days, and then COVID came and we came to be very webinar oriented, and maybe we'll, we'll come back to more face-to-face -face as uh, we see it's an, an important uh, requirement as well. Although the nice thing about being uh, virtual is that it's open to so many people and that, you know, the face-to-face the -face has a cost so uh, needs to probably be, be thought through well. Um, I also want to underline what some of the review also acknowledges uh, which I find a very important element to recognize is the very specific nature of the benefits that one can expect from a community of practice approach and I think Sil Silva you, you said it very well it's you know it's about enabling the sharing uh, of, of tacit knowledge between people and we have such a range I know, Masa, you, you were saying, and I hear your plea for having a community that is looking outwards the evaluation so that we 
the evaluation speaks to the practitioner and this has been the the the, the idea all along but it, at the same time the, the 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 width of profile makes it also a, a challenge to manage and it's been a challenge i think for you carl in in measuring uh, the benefits of that community of practice. And so, you know, it's in today's world where many seek a one-to-one -one change measure. I've done that. This is my, this is my, uh, my results. It, it's, it's a hard sell uh, when a community of practice uh, can, can have gains that are as many as there are members. <laughs> So just, um, just to conclude, wanted to say, I think the review showed it quite well that, and, and I'm sure that some of the members uh, appreciate that, the benefits um, are likely to be those that are those kinds that build over time and are relatively solid because it's about, as Silva said, it's about distilling a culture of evaluation and drop by drop uh, supporting progress in evaluation practice and it how and uh, how it's applied throughout throughout groups throughout countries and throughout institution types. Um, so just uh, taking a systemic lens, giving it time, uh, you may start to see how those drops together form a pound or even a, a C. Uh, and it, it reminds me of um, a stone that uh, was brought to me by my my uh, my kids the other day. It's a, I think it's called in English desert crystal rose. It's one of those stones that uh, is made of so many grains of sand that over time have accumulated and form such a beautiful rosy type, rosy shape stone, very rock solid and ex extremely beautiful to see. So I think this is this is how the co community of practice, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good image for how the community of practice provides some gains. So uh, very happy to have been part of this journey so far. Hope it continues as, as some of you. And uh, thank you very much for the opportunity today. Thank you, Aurelie, for your inspiring words. <laughs> I like the, especially 